morning everyone i am tanushri dalai from civil engineering branch and today i am going to teach you your theory 1 paper which name is structural mechanics so in the last class we studied about your chapter 5 which name is shear force and bending moment we studied about shear force and the sign conventions of shear force as positive sign and negative sign then we move to bending moment and we just initiated the positive sign of the bending moment so for the positive moment that is for the sagging moment the bending moment is known as sagging bending moment okay so this kind of moment representation is known as your sagging moment so due to sagging moment the body is look like this one that means the upper part of the body it belongs to the compression zone and the lower part of the body it belongs to the tension zone so that's why due to the sagging moment the body and the bending of the body is known as the sagging moment so now comes to the negative sign of the bending moment so it is totally inverse of the sagging moment that means you can see in this figure if this is the body and your moment is provided in downward direction okay at the right side as well as in the left side look at the direction of the moment so if in a body this kind of moment is provided then what happen the upper part of the body is undergo tensile zone and the lower part of the body is undergoes compression zone that means this kind of moment is generally known as hogging moment and due to this hogging moment the bending is known as the hogging bending so that due to the hogging moment the sign of the bending moment is taken as negative okay so now comes to the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram so shear force diagram it is nothing but just the diagrammatically representation of the shear force present in a beam due to the loading condition or due to the force is known as your shear force diagram okay then bending moment diagram it is nothing but the diagrammatically representation of the bending moments in a beam due to the loading condition is known as a bending moment diagram okay so now comes to the various kinds of loads acting on the beam so generally in case of beam there are three kinds of loading condition so first one is a concentrated load second one is your udl and third one is your udl so come to the first one which is concentrated load or in simply you can say point load so the point load means if in a beam the loading condition will act in one point only then that kind of loading system is known as concentrated load or point load okay you can see in the diagram this is a beam and this kind of support is known as your simply supported beam if the two end of the beam is provided with two supports that kind of beam is known as simply supported beam and then this beam at the middle part of the beam a point load will act okay so this kind of loading system on the beam is known as point load the next one is your 
UDL. So first of all, UDL stands for Uniformly Distributed Load. That means you can see this is also a simply supported view and you can see this curve type of figure shows that it is the representation of uniformly distributed load. That means for each unit the value of the load is same. That means you can take this distance then this to this distance. Okay. Total span of the beam undergoes the UDL. That means in each unit or in each span or in each meter of the beam, the value of the load is same. So this one, this one and this one is the value of loading system which is uniformly distributed along the whole span of the beam. Okay. So now comes to the UBL. So UBL stands for uniformly varying load. That means here in each unit of the distance, the value of the loading system is not same. It is different according to the each unit span of the beam. So you can see in this figure, the loading system is gradually increased towards the end of the beam. Okay, here it is small and gradually it is increased in nature. So in each unit or in each unit span, the loading system is different from another. So this kind of loading system is known as your uniformly varying load. So now comes to the what are the types of support in a beam. So first support is your roller support. Then second one is your beam support and third one is your fixed support. So in case of roller support, it is represented by this diagram. You can see this two wheel is represent the roller support. And in case of roller support, it can resist vertical load so that it can give the backward force or the internal resisting force towards the external force in vertical direction. Okay. So that here the resisting load in vertical load and reaction force is vertical force. Second one is your hinge support which is also known as hinge support. So this is represented by this kind of diagram. So now in case of hinge support or pin support, it can resist the load in vertical direction as well as in horizontal direction. And it gives a reaction force that means the internal resisting force towards the external loading system in horizontal as well as in vertical direction. Then third one is your fixed support and it is represented as this kind of diagram. So here it can resist three kinds of loading system. First one is your horizontal, second one is your vertical and also moment because the fixed support is a rigid support so that here three kinds of loading system will be registered. Then it will give a reaction force along the horizontal and vertical as well as in movement also. Okay. So in roller support, you can take the example of wheel of a vehicle and in pin or hinge support, you can take the example of a door. Then in case of fixed support, you can take the example of charger of a building. Okay. So now comes to the what are the types of beam. So now basically in your chapter there are six kinds of beams are there. So first one is your 
cantilever beam so in case of cantilever beam you can see here it is the horizontal part is the beam and its one end is fixed support and another end is free so a beam with one end fixed and other end free is known as your cantilever beam then comes to the next one which is simply supported beam so you can see that the horizontal part is beam structure and it is supported over two support so you can see here it is fixed or it is beam support and here it is roller support so you can give any kind of support at the two end of the beam then that beam is known as simply supported beam then comes to overhanging beam so in case of overhanging beam you can see the support is provided in some small distance below the beam and the end portion of the beam somehow hang and here any kind of support is not given okay so due to the hanging portion of this part and hanging portion of this part of the beam this beam is known as overhanging beam okay then comes to the next one which is continuous beam so you can see in this continuous beam the beam is supported over four kinds of support so this one is your beam or hinge support then three roller support is there so if the end portion of the beam provided with one roller support at the end then you know that in this condition the beam is not fixed so this kind of beam is known as a continuous beam okay so now comes to the fixed beam so in case of fixed beam you can see that at the two end of the beam the fixed support is provided so here also one fixed support and here also one fixed support so the two end is fixed so that this beam is known as fixed beam and last one is your prop cantilever beam so in case of prop cantilever beam it is just similar to cantilever beam only the difference is at the free end of the cantilever beam one support is there okay so in case of prop cantilever beam one end is fixed and another end is provided with one support that may be beam or hinge or that may be roller support okay so these six are the types of beam so next one is your shear force and bending moment calculation of cantilever beam having a point load at its its free end so you can see in this diagram here a cantilever beam that means a beam is fixed at one end and free at one end so this kind of beam is normally known as cantilever beam so at the free end there is one point load is acting so we have to find out the shear force and the bending moment of this kind of beam with one point load at the free end so we will discuss about this thing in the next class so today this much thank you